Hey guys, it's Shay, and I'm back with my regularly scheduled content of Draw With Me's. This week is a compilation of different art I've been working on for the past couple days. My cowboy painting, which isn't finished yet, but we're getting close. A vampire illustration of a new character, some new sticker designs for my fall shop launch, and overall just having a lot of fun and playing around with my art style. So feel free to grab your sketchbook and some paints and a yummy drink and work alongside me. This one is definitely going to be a little bit longer, but I hope you guys enjoy it. Also, thank you to everyone who entered the giveaway. By the day this video comes out, I'll be DMing the winner. So make sure to keep an eye out in your message box on Instagram if you entered. And if you're watching this further in the future, there'll be more opportunities as my channel and art community grows. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Okay, self promo over, it's time to paint. So I've been working on this painting for quite a while and my previous draw with me's I've done like the thumbnails and like the color palettes and um, doing the preliminary sketches on the canvas. But in this specific video, the first thing I decided to tackle in this painting session were the dreaded strawberry foliage I mentioned in previous videos because I knew they would require more brain energy and focus. I kind of avoided the area until I couldn't anymore. So I buckled down, put on some soft music. I like to put on like this basic cafe jazz music a lot of the times during a lot of my more recent like drawing and art making sessions and I pulled out my references and got to work. And funnily enough, I found so much joy in this section of the painting and it ended up becoming one of my favorite sections of the entire painting. I haven't finished it entirely, it just needs a little bit more details in the strawberries and on some of the leaves, but the unexpected color choices I made and lush overgrowth that began to develop was really exciting and I really liked how it was turning out. One of the things I wanted to talk about a little bit during this painting session is the importance of balance of spontaneity in illustration and painting and how I end up changing, adding, or removing things throughout the process of working on a painting. This is the first video of mine that you're watching in my previous videos about the de development of this painting, which I highly encourage you to watch, and I'll link a playlist here for easy viewing. There was so much planning and intentional composition and thought going into the initial sketch, thumbnailing, testing color palettes, and even doing mini paintings to explore how I want to render things with color. This painting is kind of an introduction or summary of the origins of these two cowboy characters of mine, the imagery and symbolism surrounding their surrounding them and their story, Strawberry Saw and Blueberry Bill. So, so much time and planning went into each aspect of this painting, which is extremely helpful in establishing a strong foundation, especially when working from imagination like we do a lot of the times. So many happy accidents or new ideas pop up through the actual process. And I think honoring those bursts of spontaneity and inspiration is really important to me, even if it's a little uncomfortable or scary sometimes. It's definitely a little hard to let go of original plans, not just in art, but in life in general. And I'm very much a type A person and want to be prepared for a piece I'm doing. So in my brain, I think I have the best chance of success if I have everything set up, but creativity can't be predicted or as formulaic as I want it to be. And I often try to force it to be that way. Letting myself experiment and do something unexpected opens up so many new directions in a piece, especially during the halfway through point that I'm at now with this particular piece and I'm able to learn so much more through flexibility and loosening up my plans and and I'm able to also gain more confidence in my voice and skills as an artist when I push myself to kind of loosen up and try something new. I think more of my artistic voice and er interpretation of the subject matter begins to shine more as this quote unquote spontaneity or like knee jerk decisions begin to take the wheel as I begin to render things out. There's this book I read last year, She Reads Guides. I know, surprising, but I also haven't read a book since then, but it's called Blink, The Power of Thinking Without Thinking by Malcolm Gladwell. It was part of like a speed reading class I was taking in like my last semester of school. But yeah, it was about these like 
snap judgment rapid responses to decision making and this gut instinct being explored and analyzed in like pro athletes um like experts in their field and just and also just like normal people and how our brains might subconsciously take in information and make judgments based on it this could be like uh fast-paced decisions on what move to make next in like social setting, sports, determining the authenticity of something, all that sort of stuff. And I think as artists through the process of painting, drawing, sculpting, or however we like to create, no matter how much we plan, practice, or study, there will often be times in the process we were like going against our plan or subconsciously making different decisions without knowing why. Yes, I, I think some sort of like color theory or background knowledge may play a role in it, but rapid judgments and corrections and interactions with what you're creating are sometimes really difficult to explain. And there is this, I would say like a creative intuition. It kind of just feels quote unquote like correct. When I was a beginner artist and even now, I always wondered how people rendered and detailed aspects of their paintings and I still do and most of the time artists will answer that they can't really explain and just detail and render until it looks good to them. Most of the time it's just an intuitive process of decision making which is just learned through partial fundamental and skill based study but also just real world practice and like trusting your gut basically. I'm really curious to hear what you guys think about this idea and if you had moments where people asked you how you made something or you made a specific decision and couldn't really explain why you just knew to choose that certain option. Let me know down in the comments if you've had like an instance like that or you find that is prevalent throughout your art making process. But back to the specific painting. Through this stage, I really wanted to honor my intuitions and be okay with going off script for a bit and just having fun with painting and color. I ended up achieving this kind of muted rainbow color in the corner of the strawberries and I really love the effect. If I had followed my original thumbnail like color guide, I would have never achieved those colors. So I'm really proud of myself for letting loose and letting the old noggin autopilot for a bit and just paint. As I finish more and more of the painting, things will, I think they'll definitely tighten up a little bit more and solidify, but having a little wiggle room to experiment and add things before the final stage has been really beneficial to my process and the outcome so far. Now, if I could just replicate the same for the blueberry side of the painting, everything would be perfect. I know in the last draw with me, I didn't really like how Saul and Bill's face were turning out, but now I do. I paid extra close attention to how I drew them in the original sketches along with stepping back from the painting so many times throughout the process, like painting standing up so I didn't want to have to like get out of my chair and like go up and down again. But I did this to make sure I was getting the proportions correct and that their features look correct and it definitely paid off. I think they're pretty much finished aside from some maybe some highlights and some slight emphasizing I want to do to make them pop a bit more but yeah I'm I'm really happy. It definitely took a lot of trial and error to get them to the point they are now. I think if you go over on my Instagram some reels that I made of painting their faces, they look like nothing like they did in those reels, which could be a good thing, which could be a bad thing, I'm not sure, but also one of you guys on Instagram commented under a post saying that once the painting is finished, that you wanted to make the Bill and Saul portraits in this painting into matching profile pictures with like you and your boyfriend and I thought that was the cutest thing ever and it meant so much to me because like these are my characters and you guys are like interacting with them and you really want to see more of them so yeah that was really cute but yeah you guys are free to do that if you want. I'm hoping to have the finished painting video come out next Friday so hopefully soon. But moving on, I finally tackled the heart as well in this painting. I don't know if you guys could tell, but there's like a heart in like the middle, the top middle of the painting. And it was pretty much the first time I've ever painted a human heart and like more anatomy, medical illustration type things, which is pretty cool. I can definitely knock that one off the bucket list now, but I was extremely careful while searching for images and references for human hearts. Ultimately really ended up searching up like uh, anatomical heart medical illustration so I could kind of avoid real pictures of the organ. I kind of have a blood sensitivity and get really uncomfortable with more 
anatomical and bodily aspects and functions. I, I don't really get queasy or nauseous from seeing it in TV shows or movies, but if I cut myself or someone is bleeding around me and I see it, I get a little lightheaded and sometimes even pass out. Bit of a shay lore dump, you're welcome. But yeah, I really love anatomical imagery and artwork and visual media and it just gets a little freaky sometimes when I realize all that stuff is inside of me doing its job and contributing to me living. This reminder of like my physical being is just this strange feeling that I don't really know how to describe other than being very uncomfortable. Also edit. When I was writing the script, I completely forgot. I have painted a human heart before. I'm lying. But technically I drew one in a reanimator redraw from a couple weeks ago. I'll put that on screen now. But yeah, fact check because I have the memory of a goldfish. But anyways, let's stop talking about that because it's a little uncomfortable. I really like how the heart turned out and it's definitely becoming a sort of kind of sacred heart inspired imagery, which wasn't originally planned, but I just find the imagery really interesting. I don't know how to describe it. That paired with these two cowboys and everything around them, I just think is an interesting thing I could explore further, but don't know if it reads that way to you guys. But yeah, this painting is getting more and more finished. I'm using so much quinacrido magenta to unify colors and bring a kind of richness to this sunset setting I'm trying to achieve. This color is basically my best friend with this painting and I don't know what I'd do without magenta. Probably just use cadmium red, but it wouldn't nearly be as like pinky, purpley, and yummy looking in my opinion. Also, I made a Terezi joke on my Instagram about wanting to lick this painting because the colors look so juicy and yummy. And I sincerely apologize for the psychic damage I caused with reminding people of Homestuck, including myself, but I will say it probably will happen again. Every couple of months or so, I contemplate rereading Homestuck. If you don't know what it is, count yourself lucky for surviving the 2010s without succumbing to the Homestuck fandom, but generally it's basically a huge webcomic with a ton of characters and gained a huge fandom online and is regarded with mixed emotions and maybe a little bit of cringe but check it out at your own risk. I'm joking by the way, I unironically love Homestuck and I have a lot of good memories associated with it. But yeah, it's that time again to doodle the characters a bit and subject my poor Instagram audience to it. I ended up posting a Terezi on Instagram and maybe I'll do more but I also have like multiple old sketchbooks filled with art from middle school of Homestuck related drawings and paintings that haunt me a little bit every single day But I think that'd be a fun video idea like looking through those old sketchbooks and maybe redrawing some of them I don't know if I want to create like a whole video dedicated to Homestuck in the year of our Lord 2023 But who knows? As I've been noodling in my sketchbook in between painting sessions, I've sort of been devising the next acrylic painting. Um, I'm really, I really want to do a bill piece to accompany the strawberry salt piece I did last year. On screen now, I'll like show some concept sketches for that painting. I don't know if, I don't have another 24 inch by 36 inch canvas, but I do have a 24 inch by 48 inch canvas, which which kind of breaks the consistency of them being like a clear diptych or like an artwork consisting of two panels and being like cohesive and consistent. The strawberry saw one I have now is a landscape and the blueberry bill piece I've been thinking about doing is in like a portrait format. So we'll see. Um, I had an idea of him with this crossbow surrounded by like blueberry bushes and um, maybe some like blueberry blossoms as well because they're really beautiful. And just thinking about a very, a very blue green cool temperature painting to push myself out of my comfort zone of relying on magenta and warm colors. But I don't know if I want to take a break or just hop into another painting, maybe do something smaller. But I feel like I have so many ideas that I want to make digital art of and I can produce pieces a lot faster with digital drawing and painting. But this Bill and Saul painting I'm working on right now really reminded me how much fun it is to work with traditional media. Maybe planning out a small composition, painting something fall inspired, maybe even like a self-portrait, maybe specific small items and symbolism referencing Bill and Saul and my other characters on like smaller canvases. I'm not sure. Let me know if you're interested in more traditional painting. Um, I definitely want to like 
really hone back in on my digital painting skills, but I, I just love working with traditional paint and I'm interested to see if you guys like more of that content, so yeah. I will say as I'm reaching the end, I'm kind of getting a sense of dread or a feeling of like dragging my feet to finish this painting. A lot of the time when I reach the final stages of a painting, for some reason it gets a lot harder to motivate myself to work on it. I don't know if you guys go through the same thing, but detail work and polish isn't my strong suit, I think, and I've been working on this idea and composition for a whole month now, maybe even longer, but I've been like posting videos about it for a whole month, so I think it's just me beginning to get tired of looking at it. I don't know if you guys get the same way, but finishing a painting can be equally, if not more, hard as starting one, and I think calling something like quote-unquote finished is really difficult for me as well because I always want to tweak and perfect things until I think it looks good but knowing myself I'll never fully be satisfied and I could possibly end up overworking some things and ruining some really beautiful and looser areas of the painting like I'm looking at the strawberry corner on the bottom left of the painting and kind of love how abstract and clear the colors are but a part of me doesn't think it's finished because the leaves aren't exact and the, and the strawberries aren't fully rendered out. I do want to put a bit more polish on that area, like really nailing down the strawberries since they're like a really key part, but I really also want to preserve that lush, wild vibe and energy that I achieved. It's definitely a struggle. I even think looking back at like the painting now, especially the, the heart area, I think I might have overworked the foliage around the heart and probably should have kept it looser and less detailed, but it's just a whole learning process. I just want to keep in mind my intentions and what I value with my work. I think I'm in a period of including more abstract and stylized elements in my paintings and not needing everything to be super exact and realistic because that's not what I ultimately want with my artwork. I want my voice to be clear and I feel and I feel that most when things are a little looser and interpretive if that makes sense. So I really want to be mindful with giving myself breaks and working on other projects interspersed throughout the while I finish the painting. Like editing videos, designing stickers, and doing some like social media work so I can keep my eyes fresh and my mind in the right place while I finish the painting. Which by the time of me typing in this script and I guess reading the script, I'm almost done. Next week's video, I'll be finishing it, so make sure to subscribe and maybe even hit the bell to be notified when I post that video, as well as you can follow me on Instagram if you wanna see more progress on my story and maybe be the first to see the finished painting. I don't know. Okay, moving on to the next piece I worked on during this week. Some of the projects that I've been working on as I've been painting the canvas include a new character I'm developing and featuring in a color palette trend on Instagram Reels with some mutual art mutuals. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it's like multiple artists do the same color palette in their own styles and subject matter. And then on Instagram Reels, it'll show like the compilations of all of them. And I think it's really cool. And art mutual of mine was looking for people to do it with and I signed up for it. So I gave a sneak peek of this character on my Instagram and a little bit in one of my prior videos, but to officially introduce them, this is Grenache, and they are a prominent antagonist in Bill and Saul's story. A little bit about her, I don't fully have her fleshed out. The, a lot of the work I'm creating is more like conceptual and just exploring her character and the imagery I want to associate with her, but the kind of vibe I'm getting right now is that she's a little over the top, self-indulgent, maybe a little self-obsessed, maybe a lot, a bit, I'm not sure, and very much manipulative in her relationships to get what she wants and the power she wants to hold. Very much like values power and control and they're definitely not the biggest antagonists of the whole story and they might even get a little redemption arc if I'm feeling generous, but they are definitely an obstacle Bill and Saul will face and it will it will definitely affect their relationship and the progress they make through their journey. Furthermore, I I really like this this color palette and I was drawn to it because I feel like it aids in the ideas about the character I wanted to hint at. So greed and envy commonly alluded through sickly green hues and a streak of red throughout the piece to signify intensity and passion. Um, Grenache isn't lazy. She works extremely hard to reach her goals, even 
if they may be destructive and antagonistic to the people around her. She does indulge in a lavish lifestyle because she believes she deserves it due to her high regards for herself and taste in decor and aesthetic. Very much has a superior superiority complex and I'm really interested to see this challenged possibly by either the cowboys or maybe higher powers in the vampire hierarchy. I don't know, that's that's up to the world building. Um, I need to work on that, but but it's been fun and it's kept things fresh to add on another character to Bill and Saul's universe and envisioning them in combat sequences or high tension conversations. I've always had vampires um, planned as like the main villain villains of Bill and Saul's story and what they would face. So it's cool to finally bring those ideas into fruition by starting with one character that will hopefully lead to more. Lots of creative food for my brain and tons of fun drawing ideas. For this piece specifically, the process of painting and trying to nail down perspective was definitely a struggle. I like even took reference pictures and even working from reference, I had difficulty with nailing it. I struggled a lot with the background as well and ultimately decided to, you know, JC Lion Decker it and just wide it out by still making some of the brush strokes be visible. As I'm trying to improve my skills and stretching more into full scenes and perspective, I'm beginning to feel a little less confident with my art and committing to fully finished pieces. I'm not that satisfi satisfied with how this piece is turning out. I mean, it's cool and I'm proud of myself for working on my digital painting skills and exploring perspective, but it didn't really match the idea that I had in my brain. I made some key mistakes along the way and I think lack of making a fully realized solidified sketch went against my goals. So this is kind of like the other side of spontaneity in art that I was mentioning previously at the beginning of this video. I feel like too much in my process leads me to feeling a little lost or disappointed with my current art skills and ability to match what I have in my head to what I want through drawing in like the first or second try. I think I was really excited about painting a new character and possibly feeling a little bit of pressure with the deadline I set up for myself to get this piece done for the palette collaboration and ultimately i think that it made me bypass my like thumbnailing process and really taking the time to solidify a concept and a like foundation and scene i find that going with the flow in like the initial steps of planning a painting doesn't really work out that often for me and i ultimately feel a lot more comfortable planning and studying before delving into a longer project, especially since time is so valuable and I don't want to waste it being frustrated and forcing something to work that wasn't what I wanted in the first place. I'm currently planning and sketching out a full kitchen scene. My boyfriend and I are filming a bacon draw with me episode for fall, so make sure to look out for that one in the future, but I really wanted to take more time to study to really make sure the perspective and scene is set up correctly. I've been watching a ton of KSM streams and YouTube videos, and if you don't know this artist already, Kaysem is a character artist currently working at Powerhouse Animation, which is like the same studio that created the Netflix Castlevania, but he also streams art education on Twitch and uploads his streams to YouTube. There's a lot of free art education content, and I have been watching and re-watching his perspective focus videos to help me relearn and even learn new things about how to draw and illustrate characters in perspective and being able to think more intuitively about the process. I don't know if you guys struggle with the same thing, but whenever I do the whole perspective grid in Procreate or Clip Studio, my drawings end up really stiff further down the line. So I really like KSM's approach to drawing more loose, to drawing more loosely and intuitively and getting a basic grasp and foundation to build on top of. I really recommend checking out his content. It's been super helpful in relearning drawing fundamentals as a more experienced or intermediate artist as I consider myself, especially for beginner artists out there. He actually has like a full 30 day free art boot camp series on his YouTube going over like anatomy, perspective, color, and all the like the basic principles important to making strong art. Yeah, it's pretty great. <laughs> Go check it out. It and if you catch him live, his streams are really fun and interactive as well. 
but yeah i kind of feel like if anyone asks me now like how to learn anatomy or like being a beginner artist and learning to draw i'll probably just direct them to him because like i would have like killed to have something like this growing up with like art youtube and stuff i mean there are similar artists who would do the same thing like maybe like cynics designs or like proco and all those channels but i really like um how Kasem like explains things and you can really tell that he has experience and like knowledge and is really well versed in these and really well versed in these aspects of drawing since he does it for a living Furthermore, I've also been looking looking at and studying a lot of Tom Fox drawings on Instagram and taking a short class by him on Domestica and really focusing on perspective and backgrounds that accompany his figures. I feel like for me, learning from kind of multiple different artists is key in understanding a concept or technique in art. Maybe I need like multiple repetitions of like learning the same thing to really make it stick in my brain. It could be like the repetition of hearing something over and over again, but I also feel like some artists like explain things, explain multiple different things. Hold on, what am I trying to say? Some artists explain one thing in a really great way and it really like resonates with you and you really understand it, but they may not explain another thing in like as comprehensive as a way. But I feel like using other artists to fill in gaps and kind of connect things together really helps you get like a holistic understanding. It helps you get like a lot of, for lack of a better word, like perspective in like drawing and different like drawing and art making methods. And I think learning how to draw and make art in this way from multiple different artists and throughout different time periods in your life lead to your own personal style and voice as an artist. In the end, your style is, I think it's basically just the result of your process. And if you're learning a bunch of different processes over time and picking out some things from one artist and a bit from another, you're bound to have like this beautiful Frankenstein's monster of little quirks from artists you admire and it eventually becomes your own being and i think a lot of the quote how to find my art style videos talk about that a lot studying from other artists but they don't always suggest to really dissect their actual process and not just like the finished piece breaking down their forms which i think is like the most important part and even better if they offer a class or offer downloads of layers of their artwork or like digital artwork or show speed paints of their art you can learn so much by really analyzing the building blocks of an artist's work and seeing them develop a piece and be able to apply so much more to your artwork. And that's exactly what I've been doing with Kasem, Tom Fox, and a bunch of artists in the past to understand art fundamentals along with developing my quote style. Even though I still feel like I don't really have one, my art is a little all over the place, but I hope that little blurb about style helps any of you guys struggling with finding your own or even just looking for some free art educational resources. Oh, I do want to add on, this isn't my script, but style also is, it's, it's not just like how you draw something, but I think it's also the subject matter and like what you draw. That might be like a little different of an opinion but I feel like the combination of what you draw and how you draw it, maybe that's like your your voice. I think style, I don't know, let me reword this. Um, I think style with artwork is definitely your process, but it's also what you choose to depict in your artwork. I don't know, let me guys know what you think down below because I definitely feel like your subject can influence the way you depict it. Like your view of the subject can affect the way you depict it, therefore, the subject matter and the content within the artwork is equally as important as how you is is equally as influential as the the process you're using to depict it. I don't know, it's kind of like a aurora, what is it called? Ouroboros. Like the it's like feeding into itself sort of deal. I don't know. It's it, it's hurting my brain, but Moving on, I, I think in an upcoming video, I'll be sharing uh, how I learned anatomy and sharing a lot more free or cheaper art resources and education for you guys. So make sure to subscribe for that content. I'm working on the script right now and I just have like a little bit more to film, but it's basically set for posting sometime next week uh, by the time this video is coming out. Ultimately, I'll consider this painting a great attempt and exploration of a new character and color palette, but 
I'm not completely happy with it and there's a lot that I don't like about it or think I could have or think that I could have or that I think could have been a lot more interesting. I'm proud of myself for finishing it and I value all the learning and practice I got while working on it and it makes me even more driven to continue to strive to reach my goals and the standard I have for my art. Just another piece of art experience I can use in my tool belt of experience and as I begin to add more characters I really want to create full design sheets for Bill and Saul and add on more as like the cowboy group expands. Um, I think I'm already working on Raspberry Rick, um, possibly an Apple Abe and Pumpkin Poppy I've definitely thought of, especially for the fall. So. so creating these character sheets, I won't be confused, forget how to draw certain characters since it's definitely going to be a lot. So uh, I think I mentioned in a prior video was struggling with likeness consistency with my characters and I definitely feel like that will help solve a lot of issues and lead to more consistent and professional looking work which is basically the end game. It's the main goal for me right now but another huge goal is to continue to build and manage my shop to make art hopefully my full-time job and be able to sustain sustain myself and and right now i've been working on a couple of ideas of new stickers and possible prints for the fall so basically the tentative date i'm thinking of for like the shop update and the shop launch for fall is Friday, September 1st, which is kind of perfect because I'm going to be posting YouTube videos that day. So announcements will line up. And if you guys don't follow my Instagram, you won't be able, you won't be too late in knowing once it's open. But if you want to know when it's open, I highly suggest you follow me over on Instagram. The things I'm mostly thinking of are like pumpkins, of course, pumpkin flavored things like pumpkin spice latte, uh, pumpkin loaf, pumpkin cookies, pumpkin pie. Oh, so good. And then also like apple picking, cider. I, I do have a confession though. I've never seen Over the Garden Wall. Don't don't freak out because my boyfriend is planning to make me watch it sometime this fall. So guys, don't worry. We're gonna get that taken care of. But yeah, I, I really wanna like watch that. Hopefully make some artwork inspired of it. But also thinking like cozy sweaters, like woodsy vibes, maybe a little bit of NBC Hannibal on the TV, you know, just a lovely, cozy, warm atmosphere. <laughs> but first I did some conceptualizing in my sketchbook along with some, along with making a mood board over on my Pinterest and also doing a warm up piece for a cuter style I want to explore with my sticker designs this time around. Okay, so I've been looking at and revisiting Strawberry Shortcake Media, um, a very nostalgic art style and franchise from my childhood, and I'm sure a lot of you guys feel the same way, and I'm thinking specifically the early 2000 generations. I know there's like older generations and newer generations, but I was specifically looking at the early 2000s because that's what I remember the most, and I was wondering what my Strawberry Shortcake character would look like, and what food or dessert she would be based on and I thought of snickerdoodles and if you don't know what a snickerdoodle are they're basically like a sugar cookie but with a stronger cinnamon flavor and typically how my family makes them we like make the batter and then we like roll it in cinnamon sugar coating and they come out so soft and sweet after baking they are delicious and they have a funny name and it kind of hints back to art with the word doodles so I thought it'd be a, a great fit for my persona in this universe. Furthermore, I asked my boyfriend what his flavor or dessert would be. He really likes the Sanrio character, Pom Pom Purin, who is a flan inspired character. So he wanted to be a flan as well with a bit of a matcha twist. So he ended up being matcha flan, super cute. And he also specifically requested to have a guayabera. So that was a fun addition as well. And I felt like it characterized him better than what I was originally planning, which was probably just like a t-shirt or a hoodie or something. I began to look at a lot of strawberry shortcake art, looking at the way the faces were drawn with like the smaller eyes, nose and mouth, big hair and kind of like doll-like bodies and it's such a cute style and I had a lot of fun mimicking it with these characters. I'm not totally satisfied with matcha flan and snickerdoodles designs and I still want to add some details and adjust the color palettes a little bit but it was a great launching pad for what I had planned for official stickers from my shop of, you guessed it, Bill and Saul, it's in the thumbnail, and trying to draw them in a similar style. 
So after Matcha Flan and Snickerdoodle, I had to see how I could depict Bill and Saul in the same style and it ended up being a warp of kind of the strawberry shortcake style, my own input and stylization and I ended up really liking it. The simpler cartooning that I was able to achieve with the line weight and minimal shading was exactly what I was looking for with these drawings and I have to say they turned out pretty cute and I really want to develop this cuter simpler style for more simple artworks and for cuter products on my shop like i'm thinking of like cute digital wallpapers or icons or widgets i tend to prefer simpler designs that are like clear and cute with stickers and these illustrations of bill and saul definitely hit that mark for me specifically with the colors i was really trying to achieve a warmer palette to match the potentially warm fall inspired colors that I hope will unite my stickers this launch and not be as varied as previous launches has been have been. With this fall launch, I really want to hone in on like a kind of more rustic, hand-drawn, painterly, pencil traditional style to the designs I'm illustrating and really try to make them similar looking to invoke a more professional and cohesive look. That's why I went through the extra effort of experimenting with styles and compiling references and inspirational images on Pinterest to focus in on one theme in particular to challenge myself to kind of basically create a mini body of work for the launch. The problem is, I said before earlier in this video, um, I honestly don't really know what my style is or what I want my art to specifically focus on. I still feel like there's so much I want to explore, so it's really difficult to nail down what I'm quote unquote like known for. I mean, a lot of people know me for Bill and Saul and my other cowboy inspired work, but I'm focusing more on that for this launch in relation to fall, but I still wanna expand and learn so much more and feel like I show so much more of my creativity and skills through different styles and subject matter. That's why I think like reeling things in and setting up design and color palette parameters is a great way to make things more connective and cohesive. I also think that setting boundaries and limitations can lead to greater creativity, really challenging you to think of new ideas and solve like design problems. You may think setting up rules or guidelines would be restrictive, but a lot of the times uh, it's actually the opposite and I think determining like a certain color palette to stay within saves more time and energy. Ultimately, like I said, allows for more creativity and room to explore instead of feeling like you have to t take the time to like figure out every aspect of a drawing or painting. And I think that's why like some artists also recommend taking on a challenge to improve your artwork or maybe get you out of an art block or an inspirational slump of some sort using a new palette for a piece, drawing like a single type of subject matter or creating in a specific style for a set period of time. It sort of lessens the overwhelming feeling of having to figure out everything for each piece. And I, I ultimately think it makes it more approachable. And, and in turn, you have somewhat, you end up with like a somewhat consistent body of paintings or drawings you can reflect on. And so I wanted to explore the warm palette and fall, fall mood more with some like comfort food illustrations, knowing that I ultimately really want to do like some pumpkin inspired stuff and some like harvest food. So I experimented with this idea through an old tomato soup and grilled cheese doodle I had. I feel like this meal is like one of the most comforting and filling meals, perfect for the cooler weather or imagining cooler weather if you're like me and live in the South. But, and I really just wanted to paint that like red and orange combo, knowing that these ideas would be prominent colors in the fall theme I'm going for. I took a lot more of a painterly approach with this piece, but I still still wanted line and cartooning to be a strong part of the little illustration and slightly connect more with the Bill and Saul illustrations and match what I want to do moving forward. I have some ideas of pumpkins with cowboy hats, horseshoes and fall leaves, apple picking aesthetics, woven baskets, farm animals possibly? I don't know. I don't know if I'll actually do this but I just like saw this adorable picture of this young goat and i really just wanted to doodle it and create artwork inspired by the creature and that's like another problem that i run into sometimes my brain just wants to draw a ton of different things and i kind of just work through a lot of ideas before i get to like the the core meat 
of what I want to create. And these little distractions, like just wanting to draw a baby goat is fun, but it's not necessarily matching with the theme that I'm going with. So hopefully I'll just get it out of my system, draw it for myself, then move on to what I really need to focus on and what aligns more with my art goals. It kind of sounds like I'm putting a lot of pressure and seriousness into developing these products, which I sort of am, but I just really want to make sure I'm proud of this work and 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 feel good about selling them to you guys. They're also kind of like mini portfolios and like I said, mini bodies of work. So I really want to make sure they're cohesive and carry a similar narrative throughout. And I find doing these warm up mini paintings like, like the matcha flan and snickerdoodle characters along with this simple grilled cheese painting <laughs> allows me to explore and make some prototypes and prepare me to make work that I have greater satisfaction with in the end. Like if I didn't do the matcha flan and snickerdoodle before the Bill and Saul, I don't think Bill and Saul would have turned out as well. So I think that's really, um, having that extra practice and exploration is super helpful to my own creative process and overall like art process. It's also not a big deal if something doesn't end up matching completely or I kind of stray from the prompt. I can always save the design and use it for something else either for posting or save it for a future shop launch or maybe like a future like membership exclusive sticker. I'm really looking into setting up like a sticker club over on Ko-Fi so maybe I could save it for like a future month but ultimately I'm just really enjoying building and managing my shop and ultimately just creating artwork and designing products that make me happy and I hope they make you happy too. And with that being said, I think that's it for this video. I can't tell if it's gonna be longer or like the average standard like draw with me uh, video episodes. Um, I won't know until I like edit the audio actually, but I really like going into depth about what, about what I was working on and sharing more about my thoughts and process. And you guys always seem to like the longer videos for drawing or painting along with, and I'm happy to provide them and be your studio friend every week through my content. And like I mentioned, I have a bake and draw with me episode. It's kind of like a hybrid video of baking and drawing. Very fun and yummy coming up. Um, another sketchbook tour this month. I'm about to finish my current one and I'm super excited to share that with you guys and finishing the cowboy painting and anatomy video coming up that I think you guys will really like. So make sure to like this video and subscribe to see those future videos and follow me on Instagram for more art related content and shop updates. And thank you you guys so much for watching and for the continuous support towards my channel and shop. I will never pass up an opportunity to thank you guys for making my dream career more and more of a reality and something I can actually sustain myself on and live and make my job. So I'm truly privileged and honored to have a great audience and community of fellow artists to engage with and who support my work and I can't wait to continue to grow together through the rest of 2023. But yeah, Thank you guys again. Have a great day. Drink some water, stretch a bit, take a break, um, and I'll see you in the next art session. Yeah. Yeah, I'll see you guys. Bye.